Full Shear, Texas is a quiet suburb about 30 miles southwest of Houston. It's rated one of the top five safest cities in Texas. It's a beautiful area with nice neighborhoods, good schools, and pretty landscapes. In 2016, Jason Sheets, who was 44, and Christy Sheets, who was 42, had been married for over 20 years. They had moved from their hometown of Decatur, Alabama to Full Shear, Texas around 2002. They settled into a beautiful brick house on Remsen Hollow Lane in a quiet suburban neighborhood. Jason and Christy had two beautiful daughters, Taylor, who was 22, and Madison, who was 17. In 2016, Taylor had been engaged for four years to her high school sweetheart, Juan Sebastian Lugo. The two were set to be married on June 27th. She had just graduated with honors from Lone Star College in Cypress, Texas. She was working full-time at a daycare facility in Katy, Texas called Kids Are Kids, and she was an incredibly talented artist. Her friends say that Taylor had a great sense of humor and was very independent. Madison Sheets was going into her senior year at Seven Lakes High School. Her friends remember her as someone who was always smiling and who loved to be around children. She loved cooking and also had a great sense of humor like her big sister. Madison was known to have a very sweet innocence about her. She had been babysitting part-time for the past three years and she would often dog sit for her neighbors. Jason worked as an IT consultant for Oxy, which is a local oil and gas company in Houston. He was an extremely hard worker for his family and he actually had a second job tutoring to make sure that his family had everything they needed. Neighbors remember that Jason and the girls were very friendly and would always wave when they were outside. Christy, however, was known as standoffish and cold. She never really interacted with her neighbors or participated in any of the neighborhood gatherings. When I was researching this case, I went through everything that I could possibly find. I picked through all of her social media posts, everything that her friends said about her, and I really tried to get to know who Christy Sheets was, what her personality is like, and I did feel like I eventually could get kind of a sense of how she was. And everyone who's into true crime has their own reasons, but I am very into the psychology behind everything. I think any time you have a case this horrific, it is important to look back and go as far back as you can as far as how this person was in their past, leading up to it, and any events that might have triggered up before that. What was so interesting about this particular case is that when you go back and look at what anyone had to say about Christy, there are two very polar opposite opinions. A lot of people from Christy's past remember her as being a great mom and that she always wanted to talk about her children and that she would whip out her phone when you met her and show pictures and how proud she was of them and how much joy being a mom brought to her. However, after everything happened, a lot of people described her as very erratic and self-absorbed, saying that she had a very low self-esteem and could be passive aggressive, and basically that would spill over into her relationships. It definitely does seem like the tale of two Christies. There was the Christie before, who everyone remembers in a much more fond way. And then there was the Christie post-2012, which was when her mental downward spiral began. Growing up in Alabama, Christie's grandfather had raised her as his own daughter. You can tell by looking at her post from 2012 that she absolutely worshipped the ground that he walked on. She writes that he basically was her touchstone for everything. He gave her the attention and the love that she needed. She went to him for everything. He was very supportive and generous and kind. And it doesn't seem like Christy had a lot of deep relationships in her life. She has a post on May 7th of 2012 that she visited her grandpa in Decatur, Alabama for his 82nd birthday. She thanks her husband, Jason, for allowing her to be there. And she has a lot of guilt about being in Texas when he is so ill in Alabama. Exactly 30 days later, on June 7th of 2012, Christy's beloved grandfather passed away. Looking at Christy's social media, you can see that she was absolutely devastated by this. Her wall is just post after post about how she's in so much pain, she cannot stop crying, she's marking the days since he died. She has a post in November of 2012 where she can't get out of the car to go into the grocery store because she can't pull herself together. Two months after her grandfather's death, her mother also passed away. It doesn't seem like Christy's mom's death had that big of an impact on her. She has one post about that her mother was really young and how sad it is, and then she goes right back to posting about how she just cannot cope with the loss of her grandfather. Christy's husband, Jason, actually said in an interview that when Christy's grandfather passed, 
the woman that he married was gone. According to Jason, Christy sank into a deep depression and began drinking very heavily. In turn, the Sheets' marriage became very volatile and began to crumble. As Christy continued her downward spiral, the Fort Bend Sheriff's Office was called to the Sheets' family home 14 times since January of 2012. Three of these calls were emotional distress calls where Christy did threaten to commit suicide. On each one of these occurrences, Christy was transported to a private medical facility where she was held for several days and treated until she would inevitably say everything was fine, be released back home, and then Jason said the cycle would start all over again. One thing that I noticed immediately when looking at these police logs is that Christie's mental health seems to deteriorate in the months leading up to the anniversary of her grandfather's death in June. I believe that the murders that occurred in June 2016 were a culmination of things and were basically the perfect storm. I think it's a pretty safe assumption that one of the contributing factors is that historically May and June have been very traumatic months for Christie. At this point, Christy and Jason's marriage was hanging by a thread and Christy would separate and go live in an apartment and then they would reconcile. And it was a pattern and a very unstable situation around the Sheets home. By looking at Christy's social media, you can kind of get a sense of what was going on in her head the last two years leading up to the murders. In 2014, during one of Christy and Jason's trial separations, Christy discovered the selfie. If you look back prior, she's always had a lot of pictures of herself, but there were other pictures of her family. Really after 2014, it's basically selfie after selfie after selfie. And there's no denying that Christy is a stunningly beautiful woman, and she was much more beautiful in her 40s than she was in her 20s. However, instead of just kind of embracing this or being thankful, it doesn't come across that way. You can tell in the interactions and in the comments of her selfies that she's looking for some kind of validation and trying to fill some kind of void. And it almost seems like she's getting more and more desperate to do so. According to her husband, Jason, she had a very low self-esteem and what he described as a deep-seated self-hatred that would spill over into her treatment of him and her treatment of their daughters. According to Jason, she would do things like tell Madison that when, well, when I was your age, I was this size. She would also try on her daughter's clothes and make references to her size, just little passive aggressive undermining things like that. One post of Christie's in particular caught my attention for whatever reason, and this was before I had read everything that Jason had to say about her personality and how she treated the girls. The post is dated September 25th of 2015, so less than a year before the murders. It reads, Happy Daughter's Day to my two amazing, sweet, kind, beautiful, intelligent girls. I love and treasure you both more than you could ever possibly know. She has some nice compliments underneath, and then one of her friends replies with, Holy crap, Christy Bird Sheets, they look like you, beautiful. Christy responds with, Thank you, Shannon. Everyone always says that Madison looks like Jason Sheets and Taylor looks like me. I'm glad someone is finally being honest and saying that they both look like me. Haha, ha, wink emoji. Her friend Shannon responds with, I'm going to share a picture of you in Throwback Thursday, Christy Bird Sheets. Christy responds to her friend with, Oh lord, this should be pretty hilarious considering it was the early 90s. I'm excited to see it and I could use a laugh today. I have the stinking flu, blah. So two things jumped out at me right away. Number one, Christy was highly annoyed at the comparison of herself and Madison. She tried to hide it with her fake emoji, but the response to her friend was passive aggressive. The second thing is she did not want her friend dropping that picture in comments. That's why she specifically asked her to send it in a private message. And then she added in the part about the flu to try to cover up her insecurities about having the picture first. And I'm not trying to make this all about Christy's looks, but it does seem from Christy's perspective that it was one of the main things that she tried to use to help fix this empty, void that she had in her life and you're very hard pressed to find anything negative about jason online it's clear that his daughters absolutely adored him and that he seems like an excellent father 
In 2014, Christy got a job as a receptionist working for John Hollis. John owned a tattoo removal company called Clear Canvas Laser. John described Christy's behavior as erratic and said that there were many times she wouldn't show up to work and wouldn't even bother calling in. She told John that she was in the process of a divorce and that she was living in an apartment separate from her family. John looked up Christy's LinkedIn profile and realized that she was misrepresenting herself as far as her role with his company. She had herself listed as their business manager even though she was just a receptionist and she also had herself as working there for two years when she had actually been there for five months. The owner of the company confronted Christy about the false information and repeatedly asked her to fix it but she never did. Five months after she started with the company, John terminated her employment. However, John said that Christy appeared to take the news in stride and that the termination was amicable. In June of 2016, Jason and Christy had recently reconciled from yet another separation. However, things were already starting to crumble again. According to Jason, she was taking multiple medications for her mental health struggles, and she was seeing a therapist once a month. In addition to that, Christy and Taylor were fighting quite a bit about Taylor's upcoming wedding to her fiancé Juan on the 27th. Friday, June 24th was Jason Sheets' 45th birthday. Christy was fighting from the time she woke up with Madison, Taylor, and Jason that day. Jason finally decided that he couldn't take it anymore, and he told Christy that he wanted a divorce. He later recalled telling her that day, this will be the last birthday that you are going to ruin. After Christy and Taylor had been fighting all day, Christy wanted Jason to ground Taylor from seeing her fiancé. Jason argued with Christy that it was inappropriate to try and ground their 22-year-old adult daughter, and Christy was infuriated that he would not bend to her wishes. A high school friend of Madison's recalls talking to Madison around 9 a.m. on Friday. She described Madison as acting weird and anxious, and she thought it was strange that she wouldn't give her a lot of details about what was wrong. She would only tell her that her and her mom had been arguing. Around 5 p.m. on Friday, in a rage, Christy sat herself down on the living room sofa and called a family meeting. She told Jason, Taylor, and Madison that they needed to talk. Jason says that he thought that Christy was going to talk to the girls about the impending divorce. She then demanded an apology from Jason, who refused. Christy became enraged and reached under the couch cushions and pulled out her 38 caliber five-shot gun that her grandfather had left her to protect her family. As they all stood frozen in terror, Jason began screaming and begging Christy not to shoot their girls. According to a family friend, Jason told Christy, please just shoot yourself, make it easy on us and just shoot yourself. Jason recalls Christy's cold response. No, that's not what this is about. This is about punishing you. He tried to bargain with Christy and promised that he would do whatever she wanted him to do. Christy replied with, no, stop talking, it's too late. Christy then turned and shot Madison in the neck and Taylor in the back. He managed to make it around the couch and was able to help his girls escape through the front door. As they fled the house, Christy fired off three more shots, missing them and hitting the wall. Madison was able to make it outside and get to the street where she collapsed and died almost immediately from her injuries. Christy followed Taylor out to the street where Taylor collapsed as well. Jason ran to a neighbor's house and begged them to call 911. As Taylor struggled to get up and get away from her mom, Christy attempted to shoot her again, but she was out of bullets. The following are the 911 calls from Madison and Taylor Sheets and their neighbor. This is the second 911 call placed by Taylor Sheets. Ma'am? 
This was the third call, which was made by their neighbor. Do you fire EMS? Uh, yes, uh, we need an ambulance uh, right away. That's Two people, I believe, I believe they're shot. Okay, stay on the line. <laughs> okay, you think they got shot, you say? Yes, yes. Okay. All right, stay on the line. And there's, a, there's, a, there's a lady with a gun. There's a lady there's with a gun? Where? Yes. It's coming out of the house right now. Two okay. people shot outside. Okay. Two people shot outside. Okay, where is the lady with the gun? <sighs> Coming out of here from the street right now. Is she still shooting? Uh, no, it's not shooting, but it's a, the gun in here in her hand. I uh, ran to the back of my house. Okay, who do you know who the lady is? Uh, they're my neighbors. I don't... Okay, and the people that she shot are, are do you know them? Are like no, are ma'am. Her? Okay. Are, are, you with the, are you with the patients right now? No, because the lady okay. with the gun what came out. I had to run. Describe her for me. What is she wearing? What is she wearing? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. What I had to run to the back. Okay, I understand. Uh, what is she? Lim- can you describe her for me? What is she? White, black, Hispanic, or Asian? She's uh no, she's a uh, uh, Caucasian. Okay. Go back there. Uh, okay. What is she wearing? She's wearing a dress. What color dress? Let me, uh, let me, let me try to pick the window. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. No problem. Don't put yourself in danger though. But do you remember what co- what color her dress was? She's wearing a uh, uh, purple dress. Purple dress. Yes. Okay. She's wearing a purple dress. She, she's on the. Is it long, short? What is she? She. Where are the patients? They're, the, they're in the street. They're in the middle of the street. But okay. I was long though. It's two people laying in the street. Two people, two ladies laying in the street. Two females. Okay. Yeah, two females, and there's a guy trying to help them. But the okay. lady is on, t- on the top of one of them with the gun on her hand. Okay, but the the sub the the suspect is on top of one of the females on the street. Yeah, she's 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 on the street, just standing up. She's standing over at one of the patients with the gun. Yes, yes. Okay. And uh. It looks like both of them are alive. Both of the child person, the okay. two ladies, they're, they're both alive. But okay. And you know, she tried to shot again. She's trying to shoot again on the top of her, but okay. apparently she don't have no more. Apparently she don't have any more bullets. Okay, yeah, I, I do too, sir. Just stay on the line. And let me know what you see. But don't. Okay. I don't she's going. She's going inside. She's going inside the house now. Okay. And hopefully, it's not getting any more bullets because she's. Looks like she's going to look for more bullets. Okay. All right, stay on the line. And there's a, I don't know where the guy went, but apparently she's, she's yelling at her. And okay. they're talking back Who and forth. The, the, describe the guy. The guy is, a, is a also, they're all uh, Caucasians. Okay. Okay, and so the, the two females and the male is Caucasian. Yes, all all, all four of them. Okay. And is the she, male she's coming out, also? She's, she's, she's coming back again. She's coming back again. With a, apparently, she had bullets now on her on her. Okay, stay stay on the line. Oh, she shot her again. She shot her she again. She shot her again. Yes, from the back. She's trying to run. She shot. She shot another the female again. That was. Yes, it was laying down on the floor. She okay. shot her from the back. Okay, stay on the line. She's she, she, she shooting again. They're running uh, down the street. Adrian, ¿dónde estás? No, bájate, Adrian. Porque es más arriba, más fácil que se vaya una bullet. ¿Por qué te fuiste para allá? Vente para acá. Sir, what do you see? Yes, what is she doing now? Stay on the floor. Okay, sir, Lay stay. down on the floor, Adrian. Yeah, make sure your family is, is secure. Don't 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 let yes. anyone see you looking out the window, okay? Can can anyone see you? Yes. Her no, address. that's that's her address. Okay. I can hear her. I don't see them anymore. But okay. there's the bullets. I can I can hear bullets. And she's she's laying down on the floor now. 
the female that was shooting is laying down? Yes. Did she shoot herself? I don't know. I don't know. I, I just see her down on the floor now, but I don't I don't know what happened because I had to want to uh, take okay. my son to safety. Okay. Okay. Did she shoot herself? Apparently she did. You think she shot herself? Apparently she shot herself. Yes. Okay. Then is she I, don't, I don't see. I don't. She's moving. Yes. Okay. You know, it doesn't look like she's moving anymore. Okay. Okay, okay. sir. I'm so sorry you're saying this, okay. but just stay on the line. Okay. 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 Stay on the line, sir. Yes. Okay. What do you see now? Are the two are are the two females still laying in the street? Uh, I can't see them. Uh, I have to say, take my son to safety. Hold on a second, please. Okay, no problem. If you're if you if you have to take your family to safety, then don't worry about going back to the window. Okay. Okay. Ya está bien, ya ya ella ya se disparó la que estaba disparando. Okay, pero con cuidado, me chao, estamos bien. Okay, sir, do you happen to know the names of these people? Do you know your neighbors? Uh, no, I don't know their names or anything. Okay. Okay, preciosa. Un favor, preciosa. Pero no te vayas para arriba nunca, okay? Cuando vaya así, algo así. I'm sorry. I had to call my son because I, he's, I he's crying too. I'm, I'm so sorry you had to see that, sir. I'm, I'm so sorry you had to see that. They're on the way. Just let me know what you see. If you, if you, you know, we have multiple deputies on the way. Okay. Okay. Uh, she's laying down on, on the floor. Deputies started arriving and trying to assemble not long after Christy had reloaded and had come back outside. Despite her critical injuries, Taylor had gotten up and attempted to flee. As you heard on the 911 call, Christy shot her in the back. It then appeared as if she was gonna walk over and shoot Madison again, who had already died. Christy was ordered to drop the gun, and when she failed to comply, an officer opened fire, and Christy was killed with a single gunshot to the chest. Taylor was in very critical condition, and she was life flighted to a nearby hospital where she died shortly after. Jason was physically unharmed, but was taken to the hospital anyway due to the state of shock he was in. The community and the Sheets friends and family were at a loss as to how this could have happened. This new details are coming out now after police were forced to kill a mother after they say she shot and killed both of her daughters. Good evening, everyone. I'm Natasha Barrett. Tom is off tonight. Neighbors are stunned and they say they want to know a motive after a mother opened fire, killing both of her daughters in this neighborhood here. Fullshire police say they came to this family's home on Remsen Hollow yesterday and they say that mother pointed a gun at them. Then they say they shot and killed her. Eyewitness News reporter Lauren Lee is live from that neighborhood tonight with some new details from one of the daughter's friends. Lauren? You know, neighbors and friends are still trying to come to terms with this tragedy tonight. Two sisters with their whole lives ahead of them killed in an unthinkable tragedy, allegedly at the hands of their own mother. Fort Bend County deputies say both 22-year-old Taylor Sheets and 17-year-old Madison Sheets were shot by their mother, 42-year-old Christy Sheets, before Christy was killed by a Fulshire police officer Friday night. Only Jason Sheets, the husband and father, was not hurt. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it crushed them, so, you know, it's hard. I know it's hard for the family. Alec Arnold grew up not far from the Sheets family home. He loved his daughters. They were like best friends. I know that for sure. Today, friends are remembering Taylor for her warm personality. She always had a good smile on her face, and it's, it's one of the things that everyone probably remembers about her. Madison was going to be a senior at Seven Lakes High School this fall. Her close friend telling me, quote, Madison brought nothing but happiness to everyone she ever met. She was nice to everyone and she wouldn't have harmed a fly. Neighbors say the girls were killed on their father's birthday. In Fort Bend County, Lauren Lee, 13 Eyewitness News. On June 30th, Fort Bend County Sheriff Troy Nels gave a press conference on the murders. Mr. Sheets summarized the following. He stated that he felt Christie wanted him to suffer. During this incident, 
Christie had ample time and opportunity to shoot and kill Mr. Sheets in the home, but she chose not to. Mr. Sheets stated Christie knew how much he loved Taylor and Madison and how much they loved him. By killing his children, Mr. Sheets will have to live the rest of his life with this horrible memory. Mr. Sheets also stated that his oldest daughter, Taylor, had a verbal argument with Christy on Friday where Christy wanted to ground her and prevent her from seeing her boyfriend or fiance because she argued with her. Mr. Sheets did not agree with Christy and told her that it was inappropriate to ground their 22-year-old daughter and prevent her from seeing her fiance as a result of a verbal argument. We asked Mr. Sheets regarding Christie's mental health. He stated that Christie was admitted to a private mental health facility for evaluation and treatment on three separate occasions related to attempted suicide. Regarding the gun that was used to kill Madison and Taylor, Mr. Sheets stated that the gun was given to her by her grandfather who passed away in 2012. It's hard to say based on the information that we have available whether or not Christy was mentally ill prior to her grandfather's death. Out of the five types of maternal filicide, or when a mother kills her children, spousal revenge maternal filicide is the rarest type. It's also the hardest to prevent because there's just not a lot of warning. It usually happens after the mother finds out about an affair or a divorce, especially when there's going to be potential custody issues. However, Christy did display some of the major warning signs, which are severe depression and suicidal thoughts. Taylor and Madison Sheets were laid to rest on July 2, 2016 at Limestone Memorial Gardens in Athens, Alabama. Jason did not claim Christy's body, so I'm assuming that someone in her family did. It is not known where Christy is buried. The only information I could find was that Christy was set to have a private service in Alabama and to be cremated after. At Taylor and Madison's funeral service, Jason read the following. If you have loved ones, tell them you love them every day and give them a hug because you never know, it might be your last day. He said one thing with his children he knows he has peace with is that he loved his kids. His kids knew that he loved them and they loved him. He showed them every day. After the funeral, Jason moved back home to Decatur, Alabama. According to his social media, he was remarried within a year of the murders. Jason will not speak publicly about what happened on June 24th, 2016. He did a short interview with Dr. Oz, but he refused to recall the exact details of what happened to his girls that day. He is very open about the fact that it's his strong faith that enables him to get through life after losing his family in such a horrific way. As far as his feelings about his deceased wife, he's been very open about the fact that he's had a lot of anger and does not have anything positive to say. He stated that he's come to the realization that Christy did not love him or the girls. Christy did not love anyone, not even herself. It's hard to end a case like this on a positive note, so I'll close it with this sweet post from Madison to her dad. It's dated October 17th, 2010 and reads, Thank you to the best dad in the world, Jason Sheets, for making my day amazing. Had an awesome time. Love you.